April the 19th, 1949, a frigate of the British Navy, HMS Amethyst, left Shanghai for Wusong and passage up the Yangtze River to Nanking, the Chinese capital. China was then in a state of civil war, and Amethyst was taking essential supplies to the British Embassy. She was also ordered to relieve the destroyer consort, which had been standing by in Nanking, ready to protect British lives and property there. She was on her lawful and peaceful occasions. Starboard, Captain. Thank you, pilot. Starboard 10. Starboard 10, sir. Weather report from Hong Kong. That's all. Okay. Can we have some more sugar? More sugar? What do you do with the stuff? Burn it? Burn it? Not plain errands, I like the tomato sauce. I don't know where you find room for it all. That in. Take it easy with that water, you ham fisted wets. Don't go slopping it all over that deck. You want to be careful, son, you get your feet wet. Say okay. Well. Any girls, where are we going? Girls in Nanking. I'm surprised at you, Martin. Fancy a young lad like you thinking about such things. Well, I'll tell you, son. Of course, I'm a married man myself, but if you've seen some of the things that I've seen... Someone's firing at us. Blimey, you're right, son. All right, let's crack it. My house. Sir, action stations. All right, sir. Number one? Yes, sir. Get the Union Jacks on first. Stop it first. Aye, aye, sir. Full ahead both. Full ahead both, sir. Both engines to the west side, full ahead, sir. Yeoman? Sir? Break out battle ensign. Aye, sir. Coming from the north bank, sir. I saw the flash that time. Tell director, train on bearing, green 70. Fire, sir. Train on green 70. <laughs> the 
military position somewhere beyond that creek, sir, but I can't get a range. Watch for the flashes! Open fire! Open fire! It's no use, Coxon. Stop both engines. She's stuck fast. You can't, Doma. Quite then, Kai Fao. number of casualties. Position. Position. 
Have you worked out our position? I've worked out your position, but I can't say if it's right or not. The trunk's in a bit of a mess. Well, add that to the message. Yes. The coughing blood. Oh, yes, a little. Did you get the signal? Yes, sir. Shall I code it up, sir? No. Plain language. Plain language, yes, sir. Doctor, there's a man bleeding so badly, I can't stop it. All right. I'll be right there. Don't move any more than you have to. Perger. Aye, sir. Start lowering some boats. We may have to evacuate the ship, or at least some of the wounded. Caesar, the position they give puts it 60 miles away from the river. It's obviously wrong. Working on a time basis, she's probably along here somewhere. It's the wounded I'm worried about, sir. Karen's had better try to reach her overland and get them into the hospital at Xinjiang. I'll get a letter of authority for him to enter the defended area. You speak the language, Dee Dee. You'd better go along, too. I'd be glad to, sir. Yes? One moment, please. It's the American ambassador, sir. They've heard about Amethyst. Good morning, Walter. No, no, it doesn't look too good. Well, I'm sending my assistant naval attaché and military attaché overland to see what we can do. Yes. Oh, yes, indeed. We'll be very grateful. Well, they better rendezvous in Xinjiang on the way, don't you think? Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Goodbye. Well, the Americans have got a US Navy doctor there at the moment. They've offered to lend him to us. He'll meet you in Xinjiang. Right, sir. I think I'll ring up Chinese naval headquarters now and see what news they have. Number one's orders. To save like we're evacuating to the South Bank. Everybody? A steaming party will remain on board, but everyone else who can move is to go ashore. We'll try and get the wounded to the hospital. The unwounded can wait ashore until it's dark and then come back to the ship. Uh, is there someone who can get the wounded after the boats? I'll look after that. Good. What about the captain? Him too. All right. Now come on, you lads. Now get these stretchers off to the boats. Aye, 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 aye sir. sir. Oh, I can pull an oar, sir. All right. Get going. Aye, aye, sir. Still can't raise console, sir. All right. Make this to Hong Kong. Have destroyed all confidential books. Please make all signals in plain language. That's it. All right, sir. And hurry with it. Soon you'll have no more power, then you won't be able to transmit at all. After that, you two are going ashore with the rest. All right, sir. Message coming through, sir. From consort, sir. On our way. Is it possible to tow you off the mud? Tell Lieutenant Head to get a towing wire ready. Aye, aye, sir.
Give way! Together! Look, number one. I... I think I may be able to get the auxiliary WT working. Have you got a spare telegraphist? No, I haven't. Uh, I sent them all ashore. There's nothing they could do here. What about one of the radar people? <laughs> they haven't all gone to. Well, uh, I'll see what I can find. On the tow rope at the devil. And you. Johnny, up here. Get on that rope. Are there any telegraphists on board? Don't know, sir. Don't think so, sir. Right, let go up. Hold it a minute, guns. Hold on for it. Are there any telegraphists down there? Yes, sir. French here. Well, get back on board. Aye, aye, sir. Let go for it. sir. Stand by. We'll try again. She's been hit already. If she stops to tow us off now, she'll get shot to pieces.
several times. Number of casualties will have one more try. They must have hit the wheelhouse. She's staring from aft. The sooner she gets out of it, the better. Sorry, not a hope. Must pull out. Good luck. Reply. Thanks for trying. Come on, lads. Let's get going. As soon as it's dark, we'll flash up the boilers again, lighten ship forward, and refloat it ourselves. If we ditch the oil in the forward fuel tanks and jettison everything we can, that should do the trick. We might even go on up to Nanking. <laughs> From Shanghai, sir. Emergency. Read it out. Aye, aye, sir. One. Report summary of vital damage. Number of effective officers and ratings remaining on board. Whether there are sufficient to steam the ship if refloated, number of seriously wounded still on board. Two, if ship can be refloated, proceed. Anchor approximately 10 miles upriver and await further orders. Three, Sunderland aircraft from Hong Kong will endeavor to alight river tomorrow morning, bringing doctor and medical supplies if considered practical. Ends. You hear that, guns? They're gonna try to get a Sunderland in. Yes, I heard. But look, what about sending the rest of the wounded ashore in the morning? Lost half the ship's company ashore as it is. Shanghai says that if we can get it off the mud, then the London and the Black Swan will try and get up to us tomorrow. The rest of the wounded can be transferred to them. They'll get treatment quicker that way. Yes, Stuart? We've pumped out 20 tons of oil fuel. She ought to move now. Supposing we do get off number one, London still may not be able to get up to us. <coughs> Look what happened to Consort. Consort isn't a county class cruiser. Come on. Let's get it off the mud. This is the General Overseas Service of the BBC. Here are the headlines. Two more British warships have been fired on in the Yangtze. Both suffered casualties and damage. In Peking, peace talks have broken down and the communists have begun an offensive along the Yangtze. In London, Commonwealth Prime Ministers are gathering for the meetings due to begin tomorrow. In China, two more British warships, the cruiser London and the sloop Black Swan, have been fired on and hit by unidentified artillery in the Yangtze. They were moving upriver towards the British frigate Amethyst, damaged earlier by shore batteries. The fire became so heavy that Admiral Madden, flying his flag in the London, 
decided that the ships could go on only at the expense of considerable casualties. They therefore returned to Shanghai. The destroyer consort, which had earlier tried to help the Amethyst, is also back in Shanghai, with nine of her crew dead and two of her guns knocked out by shellfire. Amethyst is still anchored upriver from the batteries and has reported that she may be capable of 17 knots, but the Admiralty say her charts are destroyed and it would not be desirable to let her run the gauntlet of concentrated fire. Charts and medical aids are being brought overland from Nanking. Wounded from Amethyst are on their way to Shanghai by rail. In Peking, the peace talks which it was... Mid. Sure. I'm fine, thanks, Betty. What do you think's going to happen to us? Uh, don't worry. They'll fix us up. They're good people here, you know? We'll be all right. Where are they taking you, Patty? I don't know, mate. Now don't you worry. I'll be back. I'll be all right. Don't you worry. Nurse? Where are they taking him? Where are they taking him? There's a steel splinter in your chest that must be moved. Sure. Go ahead. You get that out, maybe I'll be able to breathe. Yes. I'm sorry, but we are poor and have no anesthetics here. It's going to hurt. But you'll feel better when it's done. I am sorry. That's OK. Go ahead, John. Bannister, Stoker mechanic, and Martin, boy seaman. That's right, sir. You see, when the Chinese were leading us through the minefields, we got separated somehow. Were they badly wounded? Pretty bad, sir. Paddy, that's Bannister, sir, he had shrapnel in the chest, and boy Martin had it in the thigh. They couldn't walk either of them. They could have been taken to the hospital at Woods Inn. Miss Lee is the maid from there. Maybe... Hey, excuse me, Charlotte. There's a call for Commander Cairns. It's the British Embassy at Nanking. Oh, thank you. The phone is in my office, Commander. I'll show you. You ought not to be talking, sailor. Well, I was only telling them about Bannister and Martin, nurse. Sure. There you are, Commander. Thank you. Don't go, Mr. Dunlap. Hello? Karen's here, sir. Donaldson here. I'd better talk quickly before we lose this line. First, have any more wounded reached you yet? Well, they should soon. Now, listen. Amethyst has refloated, but the flagship and Black Swan couldn't get up the river to her. 
I know, neither can I. Well, they came under very heavy fire. Yes, a lot of casualties. It would have been hopeless to go on. Yes, Amethyst knows. She's putting the rest of her wounded ashore by landing craft. Intelligence reports are that the communists are about to cross the river in force tomorrow. Well, these are your orders. All the men who got ashore must be evacuated by train to Shanghai as soon as possible. I've already made arrangements for the wounded to go, sir. And the American doctors offered to go with them. Good, but send the unwounded, too. We can't risk their being captured. We use your authority from Admiral Wong to requisition extra coaches if necessary. Then get to Amethyst. I don't care how you do it, but get out to her and take command. She'll be told to look out for you. God knows what you'll find, but try and bring her up to Nanking if you can. Report to C&C Far East Station and the Vice Admiral when you're on board. Yeah? Right, sir. I right, thank you. Goodbye, sir. I'm ordered to evacuate all these men by train to Shanghai. Very sensible. When do they think the communists will attack? Tomorrow. Well, that should give you time. You'll be leaving too, of course. Sakes, no. Other people will be needing this hospital soon. Now, the problem I have to face is stretches. Steady. Keep it level. Careful now. Keep his leg up. That's it. Thank you, Doctor. If I may say so, you need hospital treatment. I'm okay. Have you had food? Mm. Horse's neck. Horse's neck? <laughs> Brandy and ginger ale. Brandy and ginger ale? Horse's neck? <laughs> I can't seem to keep anything else down. Horses, neck. Cheers. You're going, old boy. Number one's orders. Number one ought to be going himself. I agree. But he's in command of the ship. I'm not. That's a lot, sir. Right. That's it. All right, Coxon, let go. There she is. It's the Sunderland. Glad you made it. We needed the supplies badly. Give me a hand down with this stuff.
a doctor. Welcome aboard. You're just in time for tea. Sleep lately? A bit. Scared? Not so much when the shelling was going on. I couldn't think straight. But now. Yes, I am a bit. That's right, son. Same as the rest of us. If you said you weren't, I'd have crowned you. Landing craft approaching. Tell Lieutenant that. Through the damaged part in the tiller flat. Yes, sir. waving. He's a naval officer. Sir. One of ours. It's all right, Coxon. I'm Het, sir. Glad to have you with us. Thanks. There's a case of medical supplies down there. Get it on board, will you? Aye, aye sir. And that craft is not to leave till I say, sir. Aye, aye, sir. Where's number one? In the WT office, sir. The other officers are there, too. The CO's cabin and the wardroom were both hit. How is he? Pretty bad, sir. You know we had an RAF doctor flown into us? Yes. Well, he's rather worried about number one. Thinks he's got a shell splinter stuck in his lung. Says he ought to have been moved ashore with the rest of the wounded. This way, sir. This is Lieutenant Strange, sir. He was on passage with us to Nanking. Strange. Yeah. And uh, this is Flight Lieutenant Fernley. Sir. I'm Karen. Weston? I'm sorry, I can't get up, sir. I have a horse's neck. Uh, it's a bit early for me. You may know this already, but if not, I'm sorry to have to tell you. Your captain died on the way to Qingjiang. I've been ordered by the naval attaché to take over. Yes, sir. We've been expecting you. I'm glad you're here. I'm afraid we're very short-handed. Uh. Yes. What's your medical opinion of this officer, Doctor? Oh, I'm I right. consider it essential he should get a hospital. No, well, that's nonsense, sir. I feel all right. I'm not going ashore. Sorry, you are to go ashore now. There's a boat waiting to take you back. Yes, look here, sir. The assistant military attaché will meet you at the pierhead. I feel all right, sir. The boat can't wait. Cheers. You'll be back, sir. Sir. From the Vice Admiral, sir. Hmm. This is confirmation that I'm to assume command. 
I want to go around the ship with you a bit later on. But first we have to bury the dead. How many are there? Sixteen British and one Chinese steward, sir. I'll read the burial service. We therefore commit his body to the deep to be turned into corruption, looking for the resurrection of the body when the sea shall give up her dead and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, who at his coming shall change our vile body that it may be like his glorious body, according to the mighty working, whereby he is able to subdue all things to himself. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Coxon, clear lower deck. Everyone out. Let me know when ship's company is mustered. Oh, yes, sir. Everybody here? All except telegraphist French, sir, and lookouts. Right. Close in. Some facts. I've come from Nanking. I was assistant naval attaché there. During the last 36 hours, we've been locating the wounded and others evacuated from the ship. They're now on their way by train to Shanghai. I very much regret to have to tell you, however, that your captain died of his wounds yesterday. That leaves us, and I've been ordered to assume command. Now, the position is this. As you know, this ship was lawfully and peacefully on her way to Nanking. Well, she's still under orders to go there. We've no pilot to help us, but we've got charts and we've got an echo sounder, so we're not helpless. Perhaps when it's dark, we can try to go on. Meanwhile, we're working normal routine again, and we'll begin by clearing up the house as much as possible. Let's get her looking like a ship again. Right? All right, number one, carry on. Stand fast, Chief and Petty Officers, Acting Coxon and Senior ERA, remain to fall out. He's then the spit and polish merchant at a time like this. I'll be frank with you. I think they've probably got batteries sighted to cover every foot of the river along here to protect their troop crossings. If I'm right, that means that they can sink us now whenever they like. The only question that remains is whether they'll decide to keep us here or let us go on. This is where I want your help. Morale is going to depend a great deal on you. I know everyone's pretty depressed, and with reason. I think that if we can keep really busy and short-handed as we are, that shouldn't be difficult, things will improve. But equally, I don't want anyone to get over-optimistic. Especially, I want to avoid false rumors getting around. So, I'm going to keep you in close touch with the situation as it develops and rely on you to pass the news on. Now, we're all in this together, and I want everyone to feel that he knows what the score is. Are there any questions? Well, sir... Yes? Um, Williams, isn't it? Yes, sir. Is there any chance of one of the cruisers trying to get up to us again? I doubt it. For one thing, at this point, there's extremely little room for a big ship to manoeuvre. Cruisers are very large targets, lightly armoured. The flagship was pretty badly knocked about, you know. Nearly finished up where Amethyst did, on the mud. I don't think the Admiral could accept that risk. Anything else? All right, carry on. Coxon. Yep. I'm right about that telegraphist. What's his name? French, sir. He's been on duty for over 48 hours now without a relief. The doctor's given him some pills, but he's in poor shape. He can't even eat. Find out if there's anyone else on board who knows Morse. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, excuse me, sir, but he's not eating. I think I can fix that. Herring sandwiches, sir. He's mad about them. Uh, plain herring or herrings in? Herrings in, sir. Tell the cook to make him up a big plate for you. Aye, aye, sir. Yes, sir. Good. 
I told you I'd keep you in the picture. Well, here it is. I've received this signal from the Vice Admiral at Shanghai. I'll read it to you. Latest news just received by telephone from Nanking indicates that communists have crossed in some strength 15 miles east of Nanking and situation expected to deteriorate rapidly. You are therefore not, repetition not, to proceed to Nanking. Well, from other signals received during the last few hours, it looks as though we're trapped between at least two communist river crossings. I don't have to tell you that... Admiral. Operational immediate. The safety of your ship's company being now the first consideration, you are to prepare to evacuate from the ship and sink. Report when you will be ready. This is how the evacuation will be organized. The ship's company will be divided into three parties. The RAF medical officer will take the first party. I suppose their best plan will be to make for Su Chao and then follow the Grand Canal down to Shanghai. It's a long march, sir. Yes, I don't like it any more than you do. This must be the first time in the history of the British Navy that an officer has assumed command of a ship in the afternoon and then been told to sink her the same night. Better than having her captured, sir. Signal, sir, from Amethyst. Proposed to beach ship, as have no boats, insufficient lifeboats, and ship's company are exhausted. We'll open all seacocks and destroy what we can. Intend to leave ensigns flying. No boats, not enough lifeboats to go around. Exhausted men scrambling through the mud to get ashore from a scuttle ship with a 200-mile march ahead of them. No. No, they're not finished yet. Make this signal to Amethyst. Order to abandon ship will not. Repetition not be given. Except as last resort. Act as you think best. Let your men have all the rest they can. Well, thank goodness for that. Wait, there's a bit more. In a splendid performance by all on board ship, the work of your sole telegraphist evokes my admiration. Yeah, yeah. It's well done, French. French. Um, do, do you mind if I have one of your sandwiches, French? Of course not, sir. Help yourself. The hair runs in. Yes, I know. Thank you. As a matter of fact, I think I might be able to manage one myself. Motorboat approaching, sir. Wearing some sort of flag. Chinese army officers on board, sir. Mickey Koyla. I am Captain Ko Tai, Area Garrison Commander, Chinese People's Liberation Army. Where is your captain? 
This way. Need to wall, Lila. This is the area garrison commander, Chinese People's Liberation Army, sir. I have come as the representative of Colonel Ping, political commissioner of the 3rd Artillery Regiment, Jinjiang Front. He is prepared, as authorized representative of our general, to receive apologies from the British commander and solve, through negotiations, all problems arising from the atrocious action of British warships in their invasion of the Chinese People's Liberation Army territory and their consequent responsibilities. This ship had clearance to sail to Nanking. She was deliberately fired on without warning and without cause. I am also instructed to inform you, Captain, that providing your ship remains here at anchor and causes no trouble, you will not be further harmed. If you attempt to move, you will be sunk. That is, of course, until the terms for a safe conduct are agreed. I have no authority to negotiate with Colonel Peng. You have radio, Captain. I suggest that you obtain the authority. A preliminary meeting can then be arranged. If you will send an officer in a boat to the shore when you are ready, he will be informed of the arrangements. I have no boats. They were all destroyed. I will order a sampan to be placed at your disposal immediately. We shall wait to hear from you. Captain? I don't think it looks too bad. Mean to measure, sir. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't split it. It's my Sunday best. But the <laughs> sampan's coming alongside now, sir. Right. We should let me come along with you, sir. No, I can't risk that, number one. If these people try any funny business, there'd only be you and Strain left as it is. Oh, I think leading Seaman Frank will look sufficiently impressive. How do you feel about it? Well, it's a good thing I'm not an ambitious type of man, sir. Otherwise, I might get used to the idea. Excuse me, sir. One thing that does worry me, sir. What are the lads going to say when they see me all dolled up like this? Well, I give you three guesses. <laughs> <laughs>
Colonel Peng is coming. I would suggest, Captain, that you conduct yourselves with deep respect. I think the Navy knows how to conduct itself all right, don't you, Frank? Yes, sir. The question is, does Colonel Peng... Memorandum of conditions necessary to be fulfilled prior to negotiating of safe passage for British warship Amethyst by political commissioner Jing Jiang Front. Article 1. Amethyst and other British warships have committed brutal acts on and after April 20th by invading the front of the Chinese People's Liberation Army. The British Navy must acknowledge that such actions were wrong and apologize for such actions to the Chinese People's Liberation Army. Apologies are due to the British Navy for the unprovoked attacks on British warships. Article 2, Amethyst and other warships coordinated with Kuomintang forces and hampered military operations by the Chinese People's Liberation Army. Untrue. In the interests of Anglo-Chinese friendship, formal admissions of responsibility and regret must be made. Britain's friendship for the Chinese people would not be served by such admissions. You will no doubt wish to communicate the memorandum to your government, Captain. I'll communicate it to my commander-in-chief, but in my personal opinion, his comments will not be favorable. Perhaps time and his concern for your ship's company will persuade him in the end to modify his view. In my view, nothing will persuade my commander-in-chief to accept this pack of... this distortion of the truth. Nothing. I am uh, sorry the Chinese people have no hostility against your ship's company. <laughs> you smile, but it is true. The ship's company will be very glad to hear it. You have some Chinese rating in your ship, I think, no? I have. Mm. They will wish to mourn their dead. It could be arranged that they visit the temple in Changshan Island. I must think about that. We're not unfriendly, you see. Very well, then I have a request to make. Among the wounded who were taken ashore were two men, Stoker Bannister and Boy Martin. We weren't able to trace them later on. I think it possible that these two men were taken to the hospital at Wutsin. I will order inquiries to be made. If these two men were to be traced, I would, of course, be immediately notified. Of course. Oh, about food. And the ship is there uh, sufficient? Oh, yes. You do not wish additional supplies? Hmm? Eggs, fruit, perhaps, no? Yes, if we can buy them. It will be arranged. Chinese people wish to be friendly. And now let us go back again to Article 1 of the Memorandum. You British sailor? Some ship that come to kill Chinese people? From Amethyst? Yes, Amethyst. Well, that's the local position. Until the Navy is prepared to take the blame for everything that's happened, they'll keep us here. Naturally, the Embassy is trying to bypass these local people and get a safe conduct for us from the new authorities in Nanking, but it's bound to take time. Those of you who've been out here before will know something about the way these people's minds work. They'll play cat and mouse with us. They'll pretend to give in, they'll make all sorts of concessions, and then when we think we've won, they'll go right back again to where they started. By continually raising our hopes and then shattering them, they'll try to wear us down. And we're all going to need a lot of patience. Well, we'll have that, sir. Yes, yes, I know you will. But I warn you, it may take weeks. 
And that brings me to another point. Chief. Sir. How much oil fuel do we have left? 170 tons, sir. How much shall we need for passage back to Wusang? Well, we'll need 20 for suction, plus another 30, say 50 tons, sir. We're leaving 120. What's our present daily rate of consumption? Over four tons, sir. We shall have to reduce that. We kept an emergency supply of oil at Nanking, and I've asked for that to be brought down to us. But even if Colonel Peng agrees, it's only 50 tons. Right. We shall shut off completely all power at night. But what about the wireless, sir? Well, we'll arrange fixed transmission times with the Admiral. There's the uh, magazine ventilation fan, sir. The hot weather will soon be here. Well, we'll just have to watch the temperature. I think cordite's all right up to about 100 degrees, but I'll ask for advice about that. Now, McCarthy, about the food situation. Ah, yes, sir. In here. Right. Here, Mick, what's the idea? Silence! It has been decided to send you back to your ship. Oh, thank, thank you very much, sir. Yes, thank you, sir. The Chinese People's Liberation Army has no quarrel with the sailors of the British Navy. It is only men like your captain and uh, Winston Churchill who are unfriendly to the Chinese people. We too had our uh, imperialists and warmongers until we swept them away. Towards you, we only wish to show our friendliness. Is it not so also with you? Oh, we are friendly enough, sir. Yes, of course. Now you wish to go back to your ship, no? That's right, sir. Yeah. And see your families and uh, sweethearts, perhaps, in England. Yes, sir. We hope so, sir. Yet, because of your ship, there are many Chinese soldiers who will not see their families and sweethearts again. It would be friendly of you to remember that now that you are returning to your ship. I don't get that, sir. No? You cannot be left unresponsible. If you will admit that, there will be no more to be said. Admit what, sir? Our guns wasn't even loaded. You opened fire on us. We didn't have a chance. It will be friendly if you... Oh, friendly, my foot! Mm. Your friend is not helpful. No. I thought that he was grateful to be sent back to his ship. What do you want? A simple statement of the facts. I'll give you that. Shut up, Keith. You opened fire on us first. And you went on firing even when the ship was aground. And then you fired on the boats with the wounded in them. These men do not wish to go back to their ship. Excuse. Thank you. Now we have a special request for leading stoker mechanic McDonald of HMS Amethyst. Hey, Stammer. Do a right hold. Well, fancy. Have 
you notice they don't mention us on the news no more. Of course not, they've forgotten us. It's the cricket season, isn't it? Is it? This is the eleventh meeting now in which I've raised the question of the two ratings detained in hospital. The matter is being investigated. Very well. I come again to the question of oil, fuel, and other essential supplies. You claim that the Chinese People's Liberation Army has no quarrel with British sailors, and yet it's they who are suffering. They have already received 50 tons, Captain. Do British sailors eat oil? <laughs> Our boilers use five tons a day. Without oil, we can't make electricity to run the ventilating fans, to pump water to the lavatories, to provide lighting or anything else. We can't keep the refrigerators going so that what fresh food we have left is spoiling. We can't even keep the ship's ammunition cool enough for safety. Don't forget that we still have some wounded men on board. They're not badly wounded, but they're not recovering as they should. Everybody's health is being affected. We need disinfectant, DDT, mosquito netting, and many other things as well. All such requests must be made in writing. They have already been made in writing. Then the matter will be investigated. I like now to stress again the points we brought out at our meeting of the 23rd of June. Point one. If the British side will acknowledge that without provocation they open fire on the Chinese People's Liberation Army, an early solution to the matter of safe conduct for your ship is possible. We did not infringe Chinese sovereignty. We did not provoke the incident. There were 250 Chinese casualties. As soon as your admiral will admit the British guild, the matter can be settled. Let us consider again our uh, original memorandum. Article 1. Amherst and all other British warships have committed a brutal act on and after uh, April 20th. Thank you. April 20th. You know, sir, I thought you were going to lose your temper with them today. Oh? So did Peng. That was the idea. How do you mean, sir? Well, George, I've noticed that whenever Peng thinks he's pushed me too hard, he always makes a concession. That's how we got the mail clearance and the oil from Hooji. You think you've got more oil? I'm hoping we'll get those two ratings back this time. You see, what he wants is to keep the negotiations in his own hands. And as long as we go on believing in the possibility of a safe conduct eventually being granted, that's where they'll remain. You believe you'll get it eventually? Not anymore. Well, we're not going to give in, and he'll see us rusting on the bottom before he does. But keep that under your hat. I don't want anybody else on board to know. It might cause alarm and despondency. Yes, it might. Excuse me, sir. Well, I'm having a bit of trouble with the egg and potato, man. What sort of trouble? I'm trying to jack their prices up. McCarthy's along there arguing the toss with them now. What do they want? Oh, it's robbery, sir. They're asking a hundred pounds of sugar for ten dozen eggs, and that's over double the price we paid them six weeks ago. Well, maybe eggs are scarce. What about vegetables? Worse, sir. For sixty catties of potatoes, they want fifty pounds of sugar plus a hundred pounds of flour. Of course, they know we can't buy anywhere else. It's sheer blackmail. No, you just have to pay. Oh, but, sir, we've dug pretty deep into the stores already, sir. And the rats have spoiled a lot, too. At this rate, we'll be out of flour inside a month. Well, um, eggs and fresh vegetables are more important, I think. You're right, it is blackmail. We'd better pay. Well, um, carry on. I see. You wanted to see me, sir? Yes, Doc. What, in your opinion, is the state of the ship's company, medically speaking? Well, sir, it's pretty good, by and large. We've only got two cases of dysentery at the moment. 
The state of general health is pretty good, considering the heat and conditions. Is it likely to improve when they get used to it? No, sir, it isn't. In fact, I'm getting rather worried about the medical supply situation. We're getting rather short. I've had to stop treating people from the shore. And if we don't get supplies of disinfectant and insecticide pretty soon, we're going to have a lot of sickness. I see. Motor Lodge approaching, sir. Area Garrison Commander. Come in. Sit down, Chief. Well, thanks, sir, but I'll only stick to the chair if I do. Yes, it is pretty bad. What's it like below? 110 in the engine room, sir. What's the brickwork like in number one boiler? Some of it's fallen down. I, I don't think there's anything structurally wrong. You could still call for full speed if you wanted to, sir. What's the oil position? Only 60 tons, sir. Any chance of getting any more? I don't know, Chief. Oh, thanks. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Captain. Good afternoon. On the orders of Colonel Peng, I am delivering to you this copy of the proposed exchange note for final settlement of the incident, which will be presented for discussion at the next meeting. It is requested you obtain authorization from your admiral to sign it. I don't have an interpreter at the moment. Do you mind translating it for me? Certainly, Captain. Article 1. I recognize that HMS Amethyst infringed into China's National River and the Chinese People's Liberation Army frontier area being a basic fault on the part of the British regarding this matter. Article 2. I don't think I need trouble you any further, Captain. When does Colonel Peng propose to call this meeting? Next week, perhaps. The Colonel is in Nanking for three, four days. I will let you know. Tricky blighters. Yes. Still keeping at it? Yes. You know, if I were you... But you're not me, Strain. You're not in command. When I want your appreciation of the situation, I'll ask for it. Yes, sir. Right. Wait a minute. Sir? Huh? I'm afraid I'm getting a bit edgy. I'm afraid everybody is, sir. Thanks, George. Well, the report from the subtle, sir. There's a typhoon heading northwest. Chill, Mrs. All right. Man. Give me a signal pad. When do you get power again for transmission? Oh, not until 0800, sir. All right. As soon as you get power, send this off. When you get the reply, bring it to me personally. Aye, aye, sir. A signal from Amethyst, sir. Eh? Rather an odd one. I'll read it out, Peter. Address to CNC, repeated Vice Admiral from Amethyst. Would be grateful your advice, please, on my actions, if menaced by typhoon. Well, it is an odd question from an experienced seaman. I wonder if he's thinking of running for it. And asking for your permission to try without compromising the emergency code. Yes, that must be it. What are the latest intelligence reports? Not good, sir. They moved out more guns recently. By day, they could sink here before you go on half a mile. They've also thrown a boom across the river by the narrows at Kiang Ying. At night and without a pilot, he wouldn't stand a chance. Well, if he's asking, it must mean that he thinks it's an acceptable risk. I shall reply that I'm all for it, if he feels reasonably confident. I see, sir. Now, 
How are we going to wrap that up in seamanship jargon so the Chinese won't guess what we're up to? Huh? Now, let's see. Take us down, Peter. Uh, unlikely typhoons reach you in serious strength. The golden rule of making an offing and taking plenty of sea room applies particularly. Not bad, eh? Damn good, sir. <laughs> Come in. There's been a reply to your signal about the typhoon, sir, from CNC, the one you asked me to hand to you personally. Oh, thank you. Oh, French, how are the feet? Well, sir, I can't seem to be able to keep them cool, and then they swell. One of the tiffest things, he might be able to rig a pair of bellows and blow cold air at me while I'm on watch. Do you get it help? I might, sir. <laughs> Trouble is, there doesn't seem to be much cold air about to blow, does there? No, it doesn't, does there? All right, Prince, thank you. Aye, aye, sir. We must reduce top weight. I want the upper deck and mast stripped of all that unnecessary equipment. Cut it away and stow it below. Then I want rolls of canvas cut and sewn to stretch right along there from a gun to the eyes of the ship. Paint it black. The uh, blackout's getting very sloppy. Uh, may not be entirely necessary, but it'll keep the men busy. This idleness is bad for morale. Yes, sir. Um, and another thing. I want the cable lashed with bedding. Bedding, sir? Yes. But first of all, I want the bedding well soaked in grease and soft soap. Grease and soft soap. Yes, sir. Every time the ship swings at our anchor, the cable makes scraping noises. It's getting on my nerves. Yes, sir. Carry on. What did you say? Nothing, Cox. Well, stop the ruddy nattering and get on with it. We are now returning Stoker Bannister and Boy Martin to the captain of HMS Amethyst to demonstrate the fact that we wish to maintain the friendly relations that have always existed between China and Great Britain. Thank you. Glad to have you back. <laughs> Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, Bannister. Oh, great to see you, sir. How are you, son? Fine, thank you, sir. All right, Bannister? Sir. Well, I think we can get back to the ship now. Come on. The boys have been getting real worried about you, lad. It's a case of here come the conquering heroes, all right. Uh, How's your leg? Oh, it's getting on fine, thanks. Good. They treat you all right? Yeah. But a funny lot, though, aren't they? Captain's compliments, sir. Would you go and see him, please? Where? Is he in his cabin? No, sir. Upper deck right forward, sir. All right. You carry on. Aye, aye, sir. You want to see me, sir? Yes, sit down. George, we're going to break out tonight. What? I'll give you my reasons. First, it's now quite clear that Colonel Peng and his bosses have no intention of letting us go. Second, the state of the ship and the health of the ship's company are going downhill fast. Morale's pretty good on the whole, but it won't remain good indefinitely. Thirdly, supplies are getting really low. In a few more weeks, we'd be on starvation diet. As for the oil situation, we've just got enough left to get us to sea. In another week or so, we shouldn't be able to leave unless we oil first. It adds up. Now the reason for going tonight. It'll be another month before the moon's ripe for a breakout. 
The river's high now because of the typhoon, but it'll fall again soon. We shall be traveling at night, in the darkness, without a river pilot, so we'll need all the water we can get to take us over the mud banks. Finally, there's the element of surprise. Negotiations are still going on. We're supposed to be waiting for Peng to get back. I've been thinking all this over now for days. It's a big risk, but I think it's one that I've got to accept. I want to know if you have any reasons against it. I can't think of any, sir. Good. We slip at 10 tonight. The moon doesn't set until 11 o'clock, but we'll have to risk that. We may take the batteries here by surprise. Let's hope we do. But the batteries lower down will be waiting for us. And that's when we'll need the darkness most. As it is, we'll have to hurry if we hope to pass the big guns at Wusung before dawn. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Williams. As far as the engine room is concerned, I want everything they can give me. And I mean everything. If we come under fire, I shall ask for black smoke. Right, sir. Guns now. Under no circumstances will we open fire unless we're fired on first. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, as soon as it's dark, there'll be a lot of work to do. I want to alter the appearance of the ship as much as possible. The more we can confuse the gunners or make them uncertain, the better. Coxon, get those canvases I gave orders for rigged and have all white paint surfaces smeared with black. All hands in action rigged, no white clothing to be worn at all. Yes, sir. If things go wrong, if we're badly hit and sinking, I shall beach the ship in order to save lives. The ship's company will get ashore. I personally will be responsible for setting the demolition charges in the ship. If that happens, I don't want any heroics. Your duty will be to try and reach Shanghai overland or to escape in junks to the open sea. Is that quite clear? Yes, yes sir. And pass the information on. Well, let's hope we make it. At least we'll have a damn good try. Now, keep it quiet. Aye, aye, sir. Bring her right forward now, boys. And don't make any noise. Going downstream, I notice that all the civilian traffic carries a green light over a red. We'll do the same. Yes, sir. Now, about getting underway. We've got to slip the cable and turn the ship without making a noise that they can hear on the bank. That's why I had the cable wrapped and greased. But we've got to be careful. If we make a racket, they'll wake up to what we're doing and blow us out of the water as we turn. All right, carry on. Good luck. Good luck, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, oh, sir. I've got the uh, charts all up to date as far as possible and in the right order. They're on the bridge. Is the echo sounder all right? Calibrated and checked, sir. Well, make sure that there's a reliable rating standing by for the run. Someone who knows how to read it. Right, sir. Gyro correct, no error. Shall I have some sandwiches sent out to your cabin, sir? No. I'll be on the bridge till we slip. I want to get my eyes used to the dark. Well, I'll have some sent up to you there, sir. Right. Thanks, number one.
you this all right away. Emergency. All right, sir. Conditions aren't very good tonight, though. Must be electrical storm about somewhere. May take a bit of time. Can't be helped to get it through. All right, sir. I'm sorry for butting in, sir, but this has just been received from Amethyst. We're having trouble deciphering the last sentence, but I thought you'd want to see it. Thank you. Bring me the rest in as soon as it's deciphered. Aye, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, at this moment I have a special toast to propose. His Majesty's ship Amethyst and all who sail in her. Amethyst. Amethyst. Wait for the moon to go behind that cloud. Do you hear that, number one? Sounds like a ship coming down river, sir. Yes, look, there she is. Just coming around the bend now. Probably one of those small cargo ships going down to Kiang Ying. Well, she's just what the doctor ordered. Something we can follow. Bridge, wheelhouse, ring on main engines. The Bay Telegraphs, 185 Revolutions. Ring on main engines, the Bay Telegraph, 185 Revolutions, sir.
on that steamer, number one. We'll remain darkened. With any luck, the control point won't notice us when they challenge her. Port 10. Port 10, telephone wheel answer. Colonel Peng will be dipped to drive it when you find we've gone. You better cross your fingers, Sam, before you make jokes like that. <laughs> Looks as if we've got away with it all right so far, sir. Yes, those gunners must have been asleep. Pull ahead, both engines! Bridge, make to sea and sea. Am under heavy fire. Just about here. Another signal in from Amethyst, sir. Still under heavy fire, just past S. Beagle Point. Here it is, sir. She must be doing about 20 knots. And what about the batteries at Rose Island? Oh, they've been moved, sir. If she gets clear of Ta Chiang, she's got a clear run as far as Kiang Ying. They'll have to pass the boom there as well as the shore batteries. Sandwich, sir? No, thanks, I'm all right. What are they? Herring sin, sir. No, thanks. What the system of marking the boom is after all these months is anyone's guess. Find on the starboard bow, sir. Red flashing light. Yes, sir. I've got it. There should be two lights. Only one visible, sir. Port five. Port five, sir. Keep your eyes skinned, look out. Aye, aye, sir. Drive a port wheel on, sir. Definitely only one light, sir. The question is which side of it is the channel. Will you leave it to port or starboard? Which would you? Amidships. Amidships, sir. I'd rather not say, sir. Steady on 095 degrees. Course 095, sir. We'll leave it on the starboard hand. As close as possible. Depth now. Three and a half fathoms, sir. Tell the engine room we're approaching the boom. Everything they've got. Depth? Three fathoms, sir.
East to five. Starboard five, sir. Five starboard wheel, sir. Two fathoms, sir. Midships. Midships. Course one one nine, sir. Two fathoms, sir. I hope the skipper knows what he's up to. Otherwise, we're going to run aground. Chart House Bridge. One and a half fathoms, sir. Slow both engines. Slow both engines, sir. turn there, did From CNC, sir. How are you? Back to CNC. So far, okay. So far, okay. Aye, aye, sir. You know something, number one? I can manage one of those sandwiches. Aye, aye, sir. Ten miles beyond Busan before dawn, I think she ought to lay up somewhere and wait for darkness again. What do you think? Perhaps she could take the Tsung Ming crossing and North Channel. Well, she'd have to take it pretty slowly, sir. From Amethyst, sir. Hundred up. Just that, sir. Sounds cheerful enough. Yes. Well, there's the hundred mile mark, sir. He should reach Wusang at about 5.30. Yeah. Then we'd better move into cover. Flax make this reply. A magnificent century. Concord, sir, repeated to us, if Amethyst passes Wu Sung near dawn, support her by engaging forts from Seawood if they open fire. Very good. There are the Wu Sung forts. There. But the river's miles wide there, sir. Can't we keep away from them? Not far enough to get out of range. They've got six-inch guns. Our only chance is they won't see us. Green 4-0 searchlight, sir. We're a sitting duck if they pick us up. Have to try and keep out of their beams. Here it goes. Tell the engine room to give us everything they've got. Aye, aye, sir. Damage acceptable. How much water is there to port number one? Bridge chart house, depth now. Three fathoms, sir. Port five. Two fathoms, sir. Midships. Midships, sir. Steer zero four five. Be blind not to see us. That's just the spill of the light. They'll have to hit a square with a beam before they can see us. This is it.
Oi, Capella. Oi. Tink. She's had a busy night. Pull her head all the way. Oh, dear, lovely. South of Wu Sun. Full stop. No major damage. No casualties. Full stop. God save the king.